بس مآب وول ومن فس دوس أهارو أملاك عمين سعدك آن هوي بأجزي أبهير دس سيبالاتشو لكنوج مسقانا يقبال أجزي أبهيرن بمسنقو عمسقنو أسر أو تارن بالو ببغنا زمرو لك أسر أو تار بالو ببغنا Shabbat Shalom, Sanbet Salam. And they to Sanabatachu, Wandamoche, Hitoche, and Natochim. How was your Sabbath? How did you spend the Sabbath? Hope you had a happy Sabbath. Xiavi Maskin, Baruch Hashem. Blessed be the name of the King of Kings and His Christ. This week's uh, Torah portion, the Orit uh, Kufal, the Minbab, the Nibab, the reading and the feeding from the Torah, is the 41st, the 41st uh, Sabbatical reading and feeding, which is known variously, or at least the pronunciations can vary, and this is an interesting name. Bamarinya in the Amharic, in the Emperor's Bible, in the Metaf Kedus of Negus Neges, we call this fin has fin has fin ha fin has phineas some say phineas some say pin has some even pronounce his name as pinches if you look at the name you can see how that is derived in the english in the english sense and not understanding that that p the p sound well this is another another point, very important point, when you study um, how the so-called modern uh, Orthodox and the modern Jews, what they call Hebrew today, at least the modern Hebrews call force Hebrew. So sometimes you'll see that the F sound, whether it has a dot or a father dot, it changes it from being a, a P sound to being a F sound. Now the, the letter... Um, for the F sound, Bamarinya, and the G is from the G is, is called Af. Af. In the Hebrew, or in a Hebrewistic sort of sense, is called Pe. Pe. And it signifies the mouth. Now, what is interesting is that the name of the mouth is the Af. The Af is the mouth. So when we look at the etymology of this week's uh, Torah portion, Reading, and we look at the etymology of the name. Remember, I've tried to remind the brothers and the sisters, especially the disciples, Dekam is a Morit, to study the names. Even if you are not able to fully disclose or unclose um, the real inner meaning of the name, write it down in your copy book and your debtor and look it up. Or when ones and ones have an opportunity, you know, keep a note of it, keep a notation. It's very important to journal your studies and as best as possible, especially ones who are newcomers. It's very important to journal, just to have a good journal. What we recommend is the composition notebook, a composition notebook. And um, when you start out, whatever point that you start from, it's good, of course, to start from the beginning. But if you have just... Um, um, started to follow the, the 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 teachings and the reasonings and the video for the weekly um, Torah portions, the set, the the sabbatical readings and feedings. Um, start from there. Just make a note of it. Just make a just date it and 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 write down your notes. You understand? Whatever interesting notes or whatever questions, it's very good to document your progress. You understand both for yourself as well as to pass this on to whether your children and to communicate it to others. So this is just once again a word about taking a journal, keeping a good journal. And um, on the name Phineas, just briefly to, to continue this particular sabbatical Torah reading and feeding, which is a very, very important one. 
um, as was the last week's, um, the one on Balaam or Balaam and um, the Bial Peor. This is between last week's and this week's. We're in this um, reading and feeding that has some interesting subject matter. But let's just touch on the name Finhas. 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 It's a ha, but the next part of the word, the first part, the fi, or the af, or the pi, or pe, pi, in the Hebristic sense, pinhas. The second part is nahas. Now, nahas is very interesting because here's where we, once again, are touching on an ancient Egyptian or Kamite symbology from the mythos. So if one is to fully explicate, in other words, to be able to explain and to understand in its context what we are reading and studying and to really grow in the reality of the word, of the scriptures, we need to do due diligence in recognizing where the origins and what we call the natural genesis or, or the origins out of Egypt. Now, there's some other um, interesting, it's interesting now that many uh, so-called Europeans and Jews, Euro Eurocentric uh, European and Jews, modern ones, um, trying to vindicate their racist forefathers who tried to deny the fact that Egypt actually is in Africa and the root of the Egyptian civilization, as with the Nile, comes out of inner Africa. And in particular, its rootage is in the highlands that we know today as Ethiopia. Ethiopia. Now, Ethiopia and the Horn of Africa region is, is in the news once again. And there's a lot of interesting things that are going on presently at this present time. Um, some of the brothers have communicated to I and I regarding this, such as the drought situation in the Horn of Africa and and southern Sudan, which is one of the newest um, nations in the world, um, just uh, celebrated its uh, political birth um, a couple of days ago. I think it was on Friday or the Sabbath, the, the, the Sabbath that just passed, which is also connected with this. And we want to reason on that and communicate some of our ideas and understandings concerning the present news vis-a-vis I and I and vis-a-vis -vis our coming out of Babylon or coming out of this north country, which is also the revelation of Rastafari. Some call it repatriation, some call it exodus, but in order to understand the divine powers and the authorization and the order, it's important for us to study um, Torah or Rit. This is our wisdom. Now, this particular, the 41st, Finahas, the name, as we said, is interesting. And what we notice in doing some of the cursory um, research or Google, and we've recommended the Wikipedia page, and if you take the the Ashkenazi or even the Sephardic um, um, spelling, say, of this particular Torah portion as P-I-N-C-H-A-S, and you put that in the Google search and you put that and Torah next to it. Some interesting pages from other um, Jews or, or um, it's Israelitish ones and ones out there. There's some interesting information out of it. So just to augment, to increase one's learning, please um, take advantage of some of the Wikipedia information for each of these Torah readings and feedings. And perhaps in the future we'll provide a link at our site. But um, safe to say one can take the the Ashkenazi um, um, transliteration uh, of the name as P-I-N-C-H-A-S and look it up. But we notice that the definition of the name or explanation of the name, besides it being the name of a particular person and a very important person, um, Fin Haas, very important in our story and in overstanding 
what happened then and a spiritual a spiritual uh, admonition a spiritual warning as well as a guidance for us in the present time this particular area of the book of numbers and these um recent sabbatical the Be- alam the belam or belam reading as well as this reading finhas and the subject matter that is the subject matters that are discussed therein it, it behooves us to study them in a little more detail. And even in our meditation on these um, subject matters, when one is, is conscious and clear, one sees the, in, the, the instructions, the warning, and we can see a reflection if we're mature in our own lives, not just looking at the other individual, but seeing what the meaning in Christ in this kingly character of this is to us. So when we fully are able to digest this word, and in order to eat our food, we have to be able, just like when one is eating, one has to, if one uses fork and knife, they, they, they will cut it apart, portion it apart. If one uses the hands, they would take a little bit of this and a little bit of that. But the, the, the feeding what is being served here is a full meal. This is a full meal. Each sabbatical Torah reading and feeding, if you go through it and you don't get anything from it, then you really didn't study it or you wasn't paying attention. So go through it again. But Finahas, his name would mean the mouth of the Nahas. The mouth of the Nahas. The Nahas is the serpent. Now, the Nahas or Nas is a very important um, Kamite symbol that no doubt the true ethnic or black Hebrews were familiar with this being an ethnologically similar group to the ancient and the biblical um, Egyptians. So we have evidence of what this Nahas was, and we do the etymology on even the name of Phinehas and the name of Nahas and Nas, we get to get the brazen serpent. The symbology here, again, is the brazen serpent. Now, we know that the serpent, as a symbol, is often, sometimes, by some folks, actually, the the serpent as a symbol is associated with wisdom. But ones that lack that wisdom would look at the serpent to be an inherently evil symbol. And it is very wrong as well as it adversely affects our own spiritual growth and process to prejudice the meanings or the references without doing the prerequisite study to really, we may have our idea, but we should put it into a proper context. Because if it's not in the proper context, then what we're left with is nonsense. And, and there's already too much of that, speaking of Judaism, Christianity, religion-wise. Thus, we have the present world situation that we have. We have what we are witnessing in the so-called real world. And largely, not because there's a scripture or a Bible or holy writing that some accept to be from the Almighty or from the higher consciousness, what ones will say is God, it's, it, that's not the fault. The fault is the misinterpretation and the misapplication based on that misinterpretation because ones before I and I, many before I and I have denied the true origins of the Hebrews. Firstly, their, their, their true racial identification as being black peoples or African peoples or Ethiopian peoples. So the the whole whitewash on that. But then beyond even that, as bad as that is, beyond even that, there has been a perversion of uh, what one can say a spiritual um, sort of a whitewashing of the truth of the word. And the connection with the Ethiopic numbers and the Ethiopic Leviticus and the Ethiopic Exodus and the Ethiopic Genesis is a very 
very important. And we reference, as we have done elsewhere, and we're working on certain writings now that we hope to bring forward where um, we are making certain uh, translations, uh, composing certain books, as well as other um, Bible study um, materials that we need for, for education purposes. So we've been involved recently in a heightened level of writing and communicating and 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 um, aggregating our other um, notes and essays and, and researches together to present in a written form, in a documented form, much of what we have been sharing and disclosing and even more that we haven't had the opportunity to get to. And some things are really a more, you need to have the evidence before you, you understand, in all the references and do your own um, trust and verify for yourselves. So we're going to go into Phinehas, this particular week's um, um, Torah portion and, and, and readings and feedings because it's very important for us. So the name is Phinehas, and, and Phinehas, Phinehas, Nahas, Phinehas means the mouth of the serpent. The mouth of wisdom, we can call it. The mouth of wisdom. But the role of Phinehas, now with the understanding uh, much better of the etymological um, understanding of this name coming out of Egypt and coming out of the, the Kamite mythos, it will help us to really put this, this incident and the incident that is referenced in this week's 41st Torah portion into better context. So, brothers and sisters, stay tuned, and hopefully you've already gone through it, but stay tuned. We're going to have a couple of more um, words about some aspects of the 41st uh, Torah reading and feeding. Um, so more to come. Stay tuned. Um, Shabbat Shalom. hope you had a peaceful and beautiful Sabbath, and may you have a prosperous um, week and overcome the adversary by walking in the way, the truth, and the life of the King of Kings and his Christ. Shalom. Shalom. Let <laughs> 